So you want to create sprite sheets for your game assets, whether you're working in Unity or in Unreal Engine 4, but you want to do it using Krita. If that's the case, you're on the right video because today we'll be discussing all about that coming up. So here we are in our Krita document, which I have set up specially for making our pixel game assets. If you want to know how I set this up, these grids on this canvas, I will recommend you to watch this video over here. In that video, I have clearly explained how to set up this grid system so that you can easily draw pixel art. Each and every single necessary step you will need will be over there. You can easily check it out. Now, I am assuming that you have already watched that video or you already have these grids set up in your canvas. So let's just begin with actually creating assets for the game. For now, I'm using a 16 by 16 pixel canvas. Obviously, you can go with a much more bigger canvas with a much more bigger resolution if you want to, depending on what sort of game you're working on. But for now, for us, let's keep it nice and simple. So let's get started. Next, using the pixel brush, mark the corners of your canvas just like this. Now, we're doing this because it gives us a much more clear indication of our work area. And it will also help us while we are assembling the sprite sheets for our game assets. The sprite sheet we will be importing into Unity or Unreal Engine, whatever you're using. This will give us a better and clear indication of the work area in which we will be operating and creating stuff. So these corners will indicate the area you cannot draw outside of. In case you're working on a tile texture for some of your procedurally generated environments or level designs, or you want to create sprite sheets for your levels. So for that, what you can do is you can go into the view option at the top and select the wraparound mode on. But if you're doing that, probably you won't be needing the corners as indicators for the working area because you'll need these assets to be modular and interconnected so that whenever you're working on your project or your level designs, they will be connected and you can see how they will look uh, when placed next to each other. But right now, since we are not working on that, we're not working on the level design or assets for our level design, we will be just working on the other assets like pickup or props and all the kind of stuff. If you want to know about how you can create level designs or pieces for your level design in Krita, I'll be making a separate video on that, but for now, let's just stick with the simpler one. So since we have our basic canvas set it up, next, using a pixel brush, you can draw whatever you want to. It can be a character design, a pickup, a prop, or maybe even a background accessory, doesn't matter. So similar to the technique, I have made a similar sort of asset over here, a couple of assets. Now, in order to properly save any of your assets, whether it's an animation, whether it's a part of your level design, or whether it's just a simple proper pickup, what you have to do is while saving it, you have to make sure the background layer is set it up to invisible. For that, you can just press this eye like icon and simply save it as a .png file. If you don't remove the or make the background invisible, when you save it as PNG, it might save it as a PNG, but it won't have a transparent background. And just in case you end up having a blurred looking .png image, just watch this video over here. The link will be in the description. It gives you all the important export settings for your pixel art. So yeah, you can check that video out as well in case you have some blurred looking PNG images. After you're done with that, you're done with all of your saving stuff. Now you'll have to create a new document for your sprite sheet, which will contain all of your assets in just one image, which is much more simpler when you're importing your assets in a game engine, whether you're working with Unity or Unreal Engine. And for that, we'll have to change the resolution of a canvas so that it can fit four instead of one asset inside of it. So instead of a canvas size of 16 pixel by 16 pixel, we'll be multiplying the number with two, which obviously is 16 into two is equal to 32 pixels. And we'll be adding the value over here, 32 by 32 pixel. So let's say you were previously using a canvas of 100 pixels for your separate assets. Now, if you want to make a sprite sheet of four of these assets, you have to multiply it with two, which will obviously make it 200 by 200 pixels and create a sprite sheet of that resolution and so on and so forth. Just simply go to the top section, go into the layer options, go into the import and import all of your assets as paint layer in your canvas. Now you can use the transformation tool if you want to move your assets. For now, it has correctly placed it by default. Now, if you do it again, repeat the process, you can use the transformation tool and move the asset wherever you want it to be. And you can repeat the process over and over again until and unless your sprite sheet is fully flooded with content your assets and you're good to go. You can do the same thing with some character animations as well. Make separate sprite sheets for certain animations. It can make your workflow much more easier. You can do the same thing for your procedurally generated environments, level designs, but all of these things are for a separate video. If you want, I can make a video on that as well. But for now, you can just simply save it as a .png file, just like what we did for the separate assets, pretty easy. 
Now, if you want to have a much more clearer view how your PNGs, your basic sprite sheet would look, what you can do is you can open up your saved image in a window photo viewer and you can clearly see. If you can see a blurred image over here, that means you have to change your export settings for that. And again, I have already covered that in one of my videos. You can check that out as well. So yeah, if you like the video, press the subscribe button, turn on the notifications. You can comment down if you have any video ideas, comments or suggestions. I'll see you guys next time. Until then, peace.